Uh, if you would tonight, if you take your Bibles, please, and turn to Mark chapter 9. Uh, if it would be all right, I'm going to say a few things actually about Christ for the Caribbean in this message. And, uh, and if you pronounce it Caribbean, that's fine with me. I don't care how you pronounce it. I just, uh, I've heard so many different ways. And by the way, I've heard both ways from Sammy, so I feel like I'm okay. Uh, uh, in the book of Mark, chapter 9, and then I'm going to be looking in the book of Matthew as well. But in Mark chapter 9, I want to start reading at verse 14. The Bible says, And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed, and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, What question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. He answereth them, him, and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I, shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming. He asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. Can you imagine seeing your child? Such a condition as that. And oft times he hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Well, isn't that something, asking Jesus if he could do something? Yeah, right. That's what he asked. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, great statement, I believe... Help thou mine unbelief. That's not a contradiction. That's where we live. We have faith, and then we have a lack of faith. So he says in, in uh, uh, verse 25, When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. The spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him, and he was as one dead, insomuch that many said, He is dead. Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could not we cast him out? And he said unto them, This kind, can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Now, if you turn over to Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. And this is relaying the same story, but there's a phrase in this passage that's not in the other one that needs to be added here. Uh, verse 19. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed. When she sang a while ago and said, Sometimes God doesn't move a mountain. Yeah. I'm just grinning. If you had a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall. Remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Jesus makes a distinction. And when Jesus makes a distinction, he always does it for a reason. He says it's this kind. It's not that kind. It's not even the normal kind. It's this kind. There's something different. The disciples had done many things in the past, many great things, but they could not do this. They tried. 
but to no avail. They didn't understand why everything had worked before, it seemed like. They had not experienced a failure like this. What's going on? You ever have setbacks? You ever have things that you think are going to go a particular way and they just don't happen that way? Well, the disciples are going through that. Jesus called this by a specific characterization. He called it this kind. In other words, this is unique. This is actually different. It's a bigger problem than obviously anything they'd ever faced before because they couldn't do anything about it. They couldn't change anything that was happening and this dad's looking for some help for his child. And so he brought him to Jesus. Jesus was able to deal with it. Notice that it was not a problem for Jesus. I mean, Jesus just told the Spirit to, to get out of the child and the Spirit. Well, Jesus has great power. He spoke, the, he spoke to the devil, and the power of God was on display in Jesus. But that's Jesus. Right, right. We're not Jesus. Right. So the disciples are looking at all this and saying, but why couldn't the disciples cast the devil out? Well, it tells us three things in these two passages of Scripture that I've given you. In Matthew chapter 17, it says this in verse 20. You couldn't do this because of your unbelief. Now, the passage says that if you have the faith of a grain of mustard seed, now I'm sure you've probably seen a mustard seed. I mean, you barely see it. It's just a little bitty thing. But that little bit of faith, Jesus said, has the ability through him to move a mountain. You say, well, that's figurative speech. No, I believe that's just as literal as it can be. Just move it from one place to another. All right? That's what faith can do in Christ. But he said, because of your unbelief. You see, this was not a routine, normal thing that you were trying to do. And when it did not work, you doubted. Yeah, look at that. <clears throat> you had a problem. You were confused. Mm-hmm. Jesus said faith, like that mustard seed, could have moved a mountain but you came up against something that you thought was too hard. There's a lot of things that's too hard. Matter of fact, there's a lot of things that are too hard that you might not even think are too hard. And we, a lot of times, I'm afraid, we just kind of casually approach it and think, oh, I can get this, I've got this, I can handle this, I can take care of this. Not this kind. Not this kind. Why can't I overcome this. All right. First, he said, because of your unbelief. Number two, it's because of us being this kind. This was something different. It was unique. It had been proven that it was more difficult than anything they'd ever faced so far. Now, they attempted it. Let's give them credit. All right. But it didn't work. They could not do what needed to be done. It was a bigger problem. It really was a mountain. Yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't. And Jesus explained that to them. A faith like this, a small little faith, can make them move. But your mountain didn't move. Why? Because of your unbelief. And because of it's this kind. I'm going to show you what this kind is in just a minute. But in Mark 9, 29 and Matthew 17, 21, it says this, only, this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. Now, they didn't do that. Right. Now, how do we know they didn't do that? Because it didn't come out. Right. Right. He said only this kind will do And this kind, you've got to do it this way, you've got to do it this way, you've got to do it this way. And if you don't do it this way, it's not going to work. You're not going to do what you need to be done. All right? So, only by prayer and fasting. Now... This required more than they were used to. Uh, are there any obstacles around Florence, Kentucky, with Emmanuel Baptist Church that need to be overcome? You think? Okay. Uh, you know, it just might take more of a commit for, commitment from you for it to ever happen. This kind only comes out by prayer and fasting, or only happens by prayer and fasting. 
uh, just casual service for God won't do. Right. Right. I, I read a book a long time ago. Now, I haven't been saved very long when I got the copy of this book. I was, I was intrigued by the title. It said, Confronting Casual Christianity. And the author of that particular book passed away here not long ago. Confronting casual Christianity. Casual Christianity can't handle this kind. Doesn't work. Uh, what they thought, they could almost do it on autopilot. A little cookie cutter, you know. Oh, this worked over here, so this is going to work over here. But it didn't. It takes a gent. Listen to this. The idea of prayer and fasting. Now, I'm just going to try to simplify that as much as I can. It takes a genuine reliance upon God. That's why you pray. Why are you going to pray if you don't trust God? Why don't you just go ahead and try to do it yourself? But if you're going to pray, if you're genuinely going to pray, that's, that's saying that I'm putting a complete and total reliance upon God. And then, when it talks about fasting, that references this. I'm going to have to deny myself to do it. So I'm going to pray because I trust Him, and I'm going to fast because I can't trust me. This kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. You do not face this kind successfully without a close, intimate relationship with God. Right. It's not going to work. You don't figure this out. You faith this out. Good. Okay? We try to figure all, all kinds of things, don't we? rationalize this, that, and the other. You know, we're not nearly as smart as we think we are. We're not nearly as strong as we think we are. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to prove that every day. I, I used to be young. I am not anymore. I used to be able to work all day long and get up the next morning and do it all over again. I can still do that. It just takes me three days to recover. But I was one of those that thought I could do anything and fix anything. And then God showed me that I couldn't even fix me. There would have to be a reliance on someone greater than I am. If I was ever going to be able to do anything of any eternal value, of any spiritual value, this kind, I can't handle. This kind. This problem had been proven to be bigger than they could handle. You know, it would be a good idea to acknowledge that. Yes. Right. This problem has proven itself to be more difficult than they could handle. This problem becomes your nemesis. It defeats you because you can't handle it. All right. You may have uh, you may have said I've tried, tried, and I've tried and I've tried. One of the things I learned from my dad. My dad was the most patient man I've ever met. I tell the story. He 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 ran a used car lot, and he was one of those fellows that just had this natural sense to be able to fix stuff. Right. Uh, he had an eighth grade education, but he could fix stuff. Oh, and by the way, he had more than most anybody I knew. Right? I saw him one day for four hours work on a lug nut because the lug nut had to come off. He didn't think he wanted to tear up what he wanted that lug nut to come off of. So he worked and he worked and he worked. I watched him. Wow. In case you're interested, the lug nut came off. But sometimes there's this kind. And you can try 
and you can try and you can try. But the lug nut's not coming on. Whatever situation it is, it's, it's still going to be there. That boy was still... And they tried. They did everything they knew to do. This kind is only overcome by prayer and fasting. Not simply a, a, a ritual or some kind of religious exercise. I've heard some people pray that I'm not really sure they were paying attention to what they were saying. It can't be like that. It has to be real. It has to be genuine. It has to be a real reliance upon God. A dedicated commitment to see God work in the situation. All right? It's not casual or business as usual. It's not just the everyday. I mean, you see folks going through the motions. You can't do it by being so comfortable, so casual, so complacent in your Christianity. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. You believe that? You see the world being overcome much these days? Well, what's the problem? It's faith. Our lack of it. Our lack of trusting God. Would we be willing to commit ourselves to prayer and fasting to see victory over this kind? Well, if we're going to see it, I believe that's what we're going to have to do. I wonder what the world would see if we put ourselves on the altar for God in prayer and fasting. Trusting Him, denying self. What would God do with this kind if we did our part His way? What would happen? I've heard that there's going to be some building going on. I love building. I hate the process, but I love building. And I've seen building in church situations cause friction and problems and people get after each other. But then I've also seen it where people would get together and they'd pray, you know, and they'd deny themselves and trust God and all of a sudden there's this beautiful something out there to the glory of God. Y'all believe that can happen? Well, you're going to have to do your part. God's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. But He does give us some responsibility. Have you ever wondered stories that you've read in the Bible where God would tell somebody to do something that really they really didn't need to do except God wanted them to obey? Did uh, uh, Couldn't Jesus just roll away the stone at Lazarus' grave? Couldn't Jesus just speak to that rock and it would just move? I mean, if he said a faith the grain of mustard seed can move a mountain and he's the one that moves the mountain, surely he can move that rock. Yeah, right, right. But he told them to move the rock. Right. That was their part. Yeah. You, you willing to move a rock and trust God to do the rest? Uh, yeah. no. Now this is what I want you to understand. When Jesus said... This kind only does this and this. All right, this kind. This kind represents the impossible. It was impossible for the disciples to do what needed to be done in the life of that young man. It was impossible. It was too much. It was too hard. It was too overwhelming. I kind of get the idea it was just above their pay grade. That's exactly the way I view Christ for the Caribbean. I think it's impossible. I've told folks, I don't just think it's impossible to do it. I think it's impossible to even attempt it. It's too big. It's too much. It's too great. But then I'm thinking, there's a, there's a weird phenomenon about this. 
Why would God call somebody to do something if He didn't want them to do it? Now, it's still this kind. Jesus didn't tell His disciples that if th it was impossible for them to cast out that devil. He said, you just didn't do it because you didn't go do it the way I told you you had to be done. The impossible can be done. If I tell you a little story about something that happens in the Bible, the first thing that might cross your mind would be this. You might say, yeah, but he started to sink. And Peter did start to sink. But the reason why he started to sink was because he was already on the water. And he got out of the boat and walked. That was and had to be. Put yourself in his place. That had to be trust in God and no reliance on yourself. Right, right, right. That's fasting and praying. Yeah, good. And then he saw the waves. Yeah. Okay, he just got his eyes off of the one that was getting him where he was. Yeah. And then he cried out and Jesus picked him up, pulled him up. And they did what? They walked on the water back to the boat. That's impossible. You ever done it? It's impossible. But they did it. They did it. If God calls you, God equips you. God doesn't call you to do a work so you will fail. God calls you to do a work because He wants you to do it to His glory. God called us to it, and then you know what He said? Go do it. That's what He wants. But, there's a, but it's, it's, it's where we are right now in the, in the situation of all this, and it, it, it looks so big and so overwhelming. And for lack of a better way of putting it, you can either throw some adjectives in here if you want to. I'm nothing but a, a redneck grease monkey rock drummer from Virginia. It's who I am. Except I could add something to it. Been saved by the grace of God. Amen. Called to do a work that God wants me to do. And if it gets done, because it is of one of those this kinds. But if it is going to be done, and we, we can do it His way, if we'll do that. If we'll do that. The pastor's already told you, but I, I've been pastoring in, in uh, Danville, well, right outside of Danville, Virginia, uh, for ten and a half years now. It's amazing how God brings things around. I was the youth pastor in that church 35 years ago. I've been saved 41 years. I've been preaching 39 years. I know I don't look that old, but I know why you laugh, too. But God, all through this period of time, has brought me to one thing, to another thing, to another thing, to prepare me for this thing. But that still doesn't mean I can do it. Right. Oh, he's prepared me. But he says, all right, I bid you come. Will you get out of the boat? Will you walk to me? You can. I've called you to do it. But you have to trust me and deny yourself if you're going to see it done. When Jesus said, come, Peter was come down out of the ship. He walked on the water to go to Jesus. That was a calling from the Lord. If it be thee, bid me come. He said, oh yeah, come. It's me. Come. 
Peter believed and went to Jesus walking on the water. Well, that's impossible. But faith in a miracle work in God, a God that can do the impossible, makes the impossible possible. This kind of impossibility must take total faith in Christ and no faith in your ability to do it. Or it doesn't get done. If you, if you, if you trust in yourself, it's not going to work. We can do all things through Christ, the Bible says. Don't y'all like that verse? Have you ever paid any attention to John 15, 5? At the end of John 15, 5, it, Jesus said, Oh, without me you can do nothing. See, so you, you need to put those two verses together. I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me, and without Him I can do nothing. Now, you have to believe that, by the way, if you're going to deal with this kind. With this kind. Uh, we can do it, but we have to trust God. I can assume that you have some this kinds in your life. I'm going to maybe change your way of thinking a little bit. I believe that everything that's done for God is this kind. Because if you're not doing it His way, you have to be doing it the only alternative, which is the flesh. And the flesh profiteth nothing. And you, with me, you can do nothing. So I believe everything that you're going to do that has any spiritual value to it, any eternal value to it at all, you have to do it his way. I believe all of it is this kind. I believe it's impossible. You do understand it was impossible for you to get saved without, your, without right. Christ, right? right. Okay. All right. Well, it's impossible to live for Him without Him too. Right. It's imp impossible to do what He would have you to do to serve Him. And by the way, He wants you to serve Him if you're saved. Right. He doesn't want everybody to do the same thing. But He does want you to do your thing that He's called you to do whatever that might be. Uh, you do have some this thing, this kinds in, in your life, but I believe they're all that way. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. What part of life? Well, all of it. All of it. Everything you're going to have to deal with is this kind. It just seems like some are bigger than others, but all of it's this kind. Prayer, total dependence upon God. Fasting, denying your flesh and its inability to do what needs to be done is the proper approach to this kind of trial, task, problem, or difficulty, or whatever it is that you're dealing with. Now, I don't know what you're facing, but I do know that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above. If you've got this much faith, God can move a mountain. If you've got this much faith, listen to this. This is one of my favorite passages of Scripture. The Bible talks about that if you will submit yourself, then you can resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Now, you try to get that out of order, and you're going to get whooped. But if you'll get it in the right order, if you'll submit yourself, all right? Let me share this with you. Uh, nothing wrong with the fact that this, this hymn was written this way. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, but the only problem with it is the word that they use is really not biblical. I surrender all. Not biblical. You know what's Biblical. I submit all. Is there a difference? Yes, there's a difference. Did you know that surrender is forced on you? But submission is a will choice. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. And I promise you, the devil is this kind. But the Bible says he can, you can drive him away. 
But you better start in the right place. You have to submit yourself first. I know in Him, He has all we need. Submission to God will be the key to victory and seeing the impossible become possible. Question, are you dealing with some of this kind of things in your life? You probably are. There's probably some things in your life that you don't even realize are this kind. That you think, I, well, I, I'll get, I'll handle it. I'll be able to take care of it. Uh, there's a modern phrase that says, I got this. I'm going to be honest with you. You don't have this. Uh, he's got this. Believe it. Bring it to the Lord. Bow at His feet. Believe. Trust. Submit to God. He's the one that can overcome the impossible. Glory to God. He's able. He's able. I rode around with the pastor today. But we, um, I don't know if he's told you this part of it or not, but we're getting ready to move to Kentucky. And uh, somebody, somebody asked me the question, said, why are you moving to Kentucky? Old people move to places that's warm. I said, I didn't have any choice of where the church was. It was here. And the ministry's going to be out of here. So I need to come here. I don't like all this modern technology. I don't want to see the pastor's face on a computer. I want to be able to look at him and talk to him and be able to work out whatever it is we've got to work on. That's why I'm coming. That's why I'm coming. Among other things. But he took me around today and showed up. Look, I could probably tell you every street around here because I look at it on the internet almost every day trying to find a house to come up here. But I know where Erlanger is, Elsmere, Independence, Union, Burlington, Hebron, and Florence. The only problem is just as soon as we see a house that I think my wife would like and my wife says, I like that when I said it won't be there tomorrow. And it's not. So when we get to the place where we can sell our house and be homeless, then we'll come up here and try to buy a house. It's the only thing I know to do. Right? I'm telling you, that's this kind. That's really this kind. When I'm at a point where I'm supposed to be retiring, which I don't really believe in that anyway, but no. As my former pastor used to say, no, it's time to refire, not retire. But it's this kind. It's this kind. This is what I want to leave with you. Whatever it is you're dealing with, it might be, it might be sickness, it might be, pro I don't know what it is. When he was showing me today, he said, you know, I'd like, to, I'd like for us to have that. We could do something with that, you know. Big something. I, you know, this and that. Is that possible? Only if God can. Only if God can. Would you, tonight, bow at the feet of Jesus and trust Him and stop trusting yourself? So this kind could be dealt with in your life? If you will, I promise you, God will always keep His Word. Always. He can be trusted. So trust Him. Trust Him. Let's bow our heads, please. I'm going to ask the pastor to come up and I'm going to pray. Lord, we thank you for the truth of the Word of God. And, and the truth is that we're not able. We can't do. We try and try sometimes, and we just make such a mess. 
But Lord, you're able. You can do if we just trust you. And Lord, there are definitely some of those this kind of things in our life that are just way too big and way too hard. Way too overwhelming. Impossible is what they are. But nothing's too hard for you. Nothing's impossible for you. So Lord, may we humble ourselves. May we submit ourselves. May we trust you and deny ourselves. And as your word says, let's take up our cross and follow you. Lord, help us tonight to realize that victory is in Jesus. And we'll thank you, Lord. Have your will and way. For in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.